This video is brought to you by the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. Go to patreon.com slash disc golf nerd. What's up YouTube? Welcome to my in the bag video for winter 2019. Only a few weeks away from 2020 really and uh, it's been a great year. Thank you so much for your support throughout this year. I've posted a lot of videos and I really appreciate you guys coming by to watch them. Let's get into it. I'm rocking the easy cart. I have the soldier bag on here again. I was using the Prodigy BP1 V2. It's a great bag. I do like it. It's kind of my more full-size tournament style bag if I needed more storage. That thing is phenomenal, but it's a little bit big on the cart, so I kind of like the more compact version of this uh, setup here with the soldier bag. You can see exactly how this setup looks um, in more detail on one of the older videos I posted. Just search for Disc Golf Nerd Zuka setup. It should be pretty easy to find. And um, all in all, really, really solid rig that works out super well. Let's get into the plastic. If you do check out that video, you'll see that I have a little storage bag on the underside of my cart where I keep some discs I don't throw very often. One of them is this Opto Caltrop. It is an ace disc, really nice flyer. It seems to have a little bit more glide than the medium one I was testing over the last few months, so I'm going to put this one back in. And I really like this one for short range, hyzer shots off the tee. Really great disc for that, um, and I dig it. It's got a good grip. I like the Opto plastic. It's very consistent, and I really don't see this thing breaking in anytime soon. Um, really nice for those little short hyzer pitch shots off the tee. Next, I have my old Ricky Compass. My buddy Anthony got me. Uh, I really like this disc. I trust it a lot, but I have not been throwing it just because I have uh, a more stable goby that kind of fills the same role. I just got to give it a touch more hyzer. It's just really similar overall, so I kind of don't really need this one, but I like it a lot, so I figured I would hold on to it and keep it on our side of the cart there, and if I need it, I can call upon it. It's really not, you know, taking up any meaningful space down there either. It's a really, really trustworthy, consistent uh, mid-range that I can just throw flat and I know it will uh, go real straight with a gentle fade so that's a great disc definitely recommend the compass uh, as an all-around mid-range it's wonderful latitude 64 gladiator as well in here this one is for headwinds mostly or shots that need to go left if I power it down it'll fly kind of like a firebird type flight where I can get it to kind of skip around a corner um, or you know punch a gap and, and finish hard left but if I power into it, it'll go mostly straight with while resisting turn completely, and then it will fade out pretty strong. So I like this disc because it's a little bit more versatile um, and kind of fills a couple of different roles in my bag. But it doesn't get thrown very often by any means. Okay, moving into the bag proper. A couple of magnets. I'll switch back to the Jawbreaker magnet, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stick with this one from now on. I may get a pair of fresh ones in the spring, maybe, and start using those um, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. But these old purple ones have been working great for years. This one's one of my fresher ones I just put in, and it's really solid. I messed around with the D magnet. I like it. Um, it doesn't seem to have quite the amount of glide the Jawbreaker does, so the Jawbreaker allows me to hit longer putts more often I'd say and I can be a little bit have a little bit more touch with it and the D magnet definitely seemed to bounce out of the basket more often than the jawbreaker so the jawbreaker's got that kind of great blend of grip and it's soft enough that it catches really nice in the chains but it's not like floppy where it's going to be inconsistent in the way it exits your hand so it's a really great disc and you know I've strayed away from it a couple times uh, recently but I'm sticking with that one from now on. It just It's definitely been the best putter I've used over my career. And uh, if I'm having issues on the green, it's probably more to do with this foot injury that I'm dealing with, causing me weight shift issues, or it's just me messing up the putt, and that's it. Four chain soft magnet. This one is for a lot of my approach shots. Like If I were to play like a course like Horning's Hideout or Stub Stewart or something like that, I would absolutely put another magnet in the bag. Probably one of my um, three chain orange ones, uh, like the rainbow stamp one you guys might have seen. I'll definitely put that in the bag, but this one gets the job done most of the time for me on approaches. I can also use it for really nice, like technical putts uh, if I need to bend around a tree, you know, kind of Anheuser putt or a little S curve putt or something like that. This one seems to be a little bit more um, conducive to those type of shots, but mostly I'm using it for, for uh, straight to flippy layups and kind of go for it shots. Downhill shots in the woods, all the stuff I've used magnets for my entire career. Um, Got to be my, my top mold of all time. Okay, moving on. Soft Caltrop. This is my overstable approach disc. It's 
Not a meat hook by any means, but it never flips accidentally, so I can throw it as hard as I want to. It'll go straight and then fade out the basket. I probably trust this disc more than any other disc in my bag. Um, I just know exactly what this thing is going to do. Love this disc. Highly, highly recommend checking out a Caltrop. It's just, it's really solid. It's got that flat top, and I always know what it's going to do. It just goes straight and then finishes right to the basket time after time. And I also have the link in here. This is a throwing putter that's stable to basically just perfectly neutral. I mean, this thing holds any release angle. It is the only Discmania disc to ever break into my bag, although it's essentially a Latitude product. It's got the same plastic. It's designed by Latitude. It feels the same way. Um, and, yeah, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. They knocked it out of the park with this thing. This is hands down my favorite release of the year for 2019, and I believe the only one to make my bag. Man, this thing is just phenomenal. Um, it holds any line. I can throw it on a strong turnover to a strong hyzer and every little nuance in between. And uh, it really just takes that angle and flies. It's a beautiful disc. I love that thing. I'm throwing it quite a bit on shorter shots. Mid-ranges. Okay, another new one. Have not reviewed this one just yet. I think I've reviewed basically every other disc in this bag, though, um, in one way or another. This is a Fuse, Opto Fuse. So this is a really nice, flippy, um, more understable complement to my Gobies. Um, the Gobies is considered an understable mid-range, but, but for me, they're really neutral um, to just very straight. And uh, some of them even have some fade to them. This one is just really, really neutral all the way, so it holds the turn that much easier, and I like it quite a bit. I'm, I'm really excited to continue throwing this thing. Heard so much about fuses from the, some of the DD team members and... Other casual players out there just seem to really love this disc, and it's just a really, really phenomenal disc. I got it to review, but after I started throwing it, it went straight in the bag, and uh, I think I'm going to hold on to it for a while and keep keep working some shots with it, because I'm really enjoying the, the flight of it. Also, moving on, we got some Gobies, of course. One of my favorite, if not, you know, top three favorite discs of all time. This one right here is uh, my original one. I don't throw it too much, but it's real straight. I like this one more for like longer approaches. If I can't reach it with the link or, or my Caltrep, I'll probably throw this disc. Um, really, really helpful for that. Like a kind of get out of trouble, get up and down type disc. This thing works out really well um, and uh, definitely is a good disc to just kind of get you a putt, you know? This disc always seems to get me up in, uh, up in range to have some kind of a putt, and I like that disc a lot. This is probably my most thrown disc in my bag, or one of them for sure. I've been throwing the hell out of this thing. It's another just basic stock goby red, but I dyed the rim orange, and I'm throwing this thing a ton. I love this guy. It's just like my beater workhorse goby. I throw it a ton. It's actually quite stable for a goby. It's pretty flat. It seems a little quicker in the air than some of my other ones. Like the Domier ones seem to float a little slower. This one cuts through the air a little bit more, gets a little more distance, and has a little bit more stability to it. Really love that disc. I'm throwing that one a lot. And finally, for mid-ranges, I have a little Frank Castle in the bag. This is a Deco Anchor. It's a blank Deco Anchor that I dyed twice. It has the uh, turmeric dye on it from the original video I did with that, even though it's faded quite a bit. You can still see some yellow there. And also, I did this uh, Punisher dye on here as well love this disc really really consistent kind of like a little bit longer and definitely much more overstable than my caltrop for certain shots it works really really well great into the wind as well the anchor is a great wind fighter okay beyond that i'm down to two molds of drivers i got furies and thrashers that's it i have a whole bunch of them so let's take a look at them i really tried to simplify my bag system over the last year or so and yeah, other than occasionally breaking out that Gladiator, if I'm throwing a driver, it's a Fury or it's a Thrasher. Uh, it's been a pretty consistent system, and I'm getting a lot of different flights out of these because you can kind of use the plastic types and a little bit of uh, weight variations and get yourself a lot of different flights from those two molds. Let's take a look at my Furies first. This is my Ace Fury from Stub Stewart. Downhill shot, I'll probably... If I can find it, I'll cut in a clip of me throwing on that same hole. Really, really nice for downhill shots. This is my flippiest um, fairway driver by far. This one um, will hold a turnover super easy, so I can kind of throw this because I don't really have a forehand. So I can fight a really sharp turnover and mimic a forehand type line. But I can do everything else I need to do with this thing. Heiser flips, Heiser flips to the long turns, rollers, it's a great roller disc, quick and really easy to get it down on a roller, great beginner driver. The Fury is one of my favorite molds out there. It's just been really, really fun to throw 
and uh, I've, I've thrown a lot of very effective shots with this disc and my other Furies over the years. That one's really great. Moving on, I've got a few more. This one is probably one of the cooler die jobs I've done so far. I'm pretty happy with the way this one came out. At first I wasn't really that into it because it's very dark, but after I started looking at it a little closer, it's pretty rad. I think you'll agree it's a good looking disc. And this one, very, very straight. Um, it's a brand new max weight, or not much. Yeah, it's 175 um, Opto Fury. The opaque white, opaque lucid plastic tends to be a little bit stable too, so this one I can throw pretty hard. I just got to give it a slight hyzer and it'll pop up and fly real straight. Good glide, but it's brand new, so I'm not super familiar with it yet. I'm still getting to know it. This one I've thrown a lot over the last few months. It is a Gold Line Fury, also max weight 175. Nice flyer, pretty neutral uh, overall. It'll hold a hyzer for me, which my other Furies don't necessarily like to do. So I can put it on a hyzer, and it'll kind of pop up a little bit, but it'll still fade in and have a nice, like, kind of soft sweeping hyzer that way. It'll fly real straight as well. Tends to have a little bit of a fade when it slows down. Quite neutral. Pretty, uh, pretty close to the numbers, really. Good glide. Um, it will turn naturally, but not crazy amount and it, uh, it doesn't, tends to come back when it slows down unless I have it over on a turn and then a Fury will just hold those turns all the way which is a the first the reason I got them in the first place I was looking for a disc that will always hold that turn my pink Opto one works great for that but I found that the other types of plastics makes it a really versatile mold for straight shots as well and um, different uh, different angles out there this is the Opto X Glamour Fury one of the uh, most beautiful discs I've ever had and this thing is really overstable for a Fury. I mean, it's almost much closer to like a Culverin, Convict um, type flight. Vastly different than my pink Opto one, that's for sure. And I'm still getting to know this one. I haven't thrown it very much, but I know for sure it's much, much more overstable than any other Fury I've tested. And um, definitely gives me a nice layer in the bag. Actually, I'm pretty sure Santa Claus is bringing me a uh, culverin to retest because I've been kind of digging the little bit slower discs and I liked that mold years ago when I first tried it so I'm going to give it another shot but I have the feeling it's not going to be too different than this Fury actually but we'll see if it's if it's you know, necessary to have both in the bag and then finally we got a whole bunch of thrashers let's uh, take a look at them this one is a 165 ESP it's quite light. It is very flat across the top. The grip is amazing and gets better all the time. This ESP season is so beautiful. It just has a, an amazing feel. And this thing is super flippy. I mean, one of the flippiest distance drivers I've ever had. Started on hyzer. It'll flip up and turn immediately if thrown hard. So I can start it on a soft hyzer, get it to flip up and, and float a smooth turnover. I can get it to hold sharp turns, get it down on a roller super easy. That's probably what I pull it out for most often is rollers. And anything super flippy, you know, if I need to throw like a standstill hyzer flip, that'll just stand up, work over, and maybe come back since I don't have as much power standstill. This is a great disc for that. Real, real flippy and uh, a great kind of flippy utility disc. This one is a little bit heavier, not quite as flat, a little bit fresher. This is a really nice just straight hyzer flip disc. It'll ride a little bit, it'll come back, and... It really flies real nice, um, and I'm just I'm loving the feel of the ESP so much. I want to get this one to start gripping like my other one. And it's not too far off now. Another die job I did, not my favorite one. I did a purple shaving cream dip, and then I went again with conditioner and did the pink on top of it. It looks all right. This one is pretty sweet, I think. This is my Big Z Thrasher. This one is actually a backup that I used to have for the orange one that you guys may have seen in my last in the bag that I've been throwing for years. And I dyed this one, and it came out so good that I decided to put it in the bag and make that other one the backup for this one. Um, it's just a little, it needs a little bit of seasoning to get there, but it's not too far off. This is probably my max distance disc. Um, I can probably throw the flippy ESP one farther, but it's way, way less controllable than this. So if I need to throw a big distance shot, this is probably what I'm going to, and it's a really, really great straight line distance disc overall. Very accurate with big distance and flies super straight. I love the Big Z Thrasher. Probably, you know, it's hard to say. I like them all, but the Big Z ones are, are particularly nice, I think. Next, this is a solid, just workhorse Z one. I think it's 174 or so. I don't know. I barely pay attention to weight anymore, guys. Unless it's, you're talking about like really lightweight, like 160 or below, 
um, and comparing that to like 175 plus I, I, you know there's a lot of people that seem to think that a couple of grams matter here and there I really don't uh, agree based on my testing of a lot of golf discs this one's uh, somewhere around max weight and it's just a solid workhorse disc I can throw it pretty flat and pretty strong it'll ride out but it'll come back and a uh, good distance I throw that one quite a bit I trust that one a lot this is a newer run Z1 that I found at the depot and it's just so pretty it's got this really nice like metallic um, look to it I like the new way they kind of altered the uh, Z stamp that the flight number is on here now and I was like hey let's check out a, a fresh a newer run fresh one and uh, this one flies great so I've been throwing it quite a bit it's probably my one of my more stable ones so I can really hit it and it'll ride out but it always comes back a little bit stronger and if I don't throw it too strong it'll just kind of stand up flat and then fade without really getting any movement to the right so I like that one quite a bit I like them all <laughs> I like all my discs they're great that's why they're in my bag because I love them and finally we have the most overstable one by far this is the 2019 Ledgestone Glow Sparkle these glow nice I'm usually not a big fan of flag stamps but the way this one looks on the blue with the red white and blue sparkles it's a real handsome disc I think it's a good looking disc. It grips real nice. Um, it's, this one's not quite as domey as the other one I have. This one's a little more flat. I believe it's max weight or close to it. This one's um, quite overstable for a thrasher. So I can throw this one flat and hard. It will barely move right at all. It'll just kind of hold up straight and then fade out. So it's a nice layer to have in my distance drivers. I don't throw it very often. Probably the least out of all my thrashers at this point. But when I need it, it's great, um, especially if I just, yeah, need a little bit more finish and less movement to the right. This is the one I, I reach for, and it's uh, definitely quite overstable for a thrasher. So if you like them, or if you tried one, you found it too flippy, but you like the feel or anything along those lines, this is the one you want to look into for that more stability. There it is. We did it. We made it to the end. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about any of these discs, let me know. I'll answer them in the comments down below. I'll check you later. Cheers.